Well, say good morning again uh, to those who have just joined us. It was funny, actually, just uh, looking at my phone and watching um, all of the people just um, sort of popping up um, just in the last few seconds there. Uh, you obviously know that, uh, that I start on time with these sprinkler talks. And uh, yeah, so I make it exactly 10 o'clock now. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, getting underway. Um, so, OK, let's let's go. Let's uh, where's my mouse gone. There it is. Um, so again, just a, a reminder to start with that these sprinkler talk uh, sessions are being streamed um, on our website, um, and uh, the the previous versions, um, will, the previous episodes will also be available uh, shortly afterwards uh, on our website. So if you missed episode one or two, uh, you can go on our website and watch those, and they're also on our YouTube channel as well. Um, so yeah, do, do look out for those, do uh, kind of share links uh, with your, your friends and your colleagues, uh, people that you, you think will be interested um, in these Sprinkler Talks. Do kind of spread the word, that would be brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to start my presentation today by looking at this, uh, common sprinkler failings. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, when I say common, um, obviously all of these things are not very common at all because sprinkler systems are extremely reliable um, and they've been proven to be very reliable uh, in their operation um, over, say, many, many years, um, you know, over 100 years, really, of, of kind of very similar sprinkler systems being in operation. So when I say common, say they're not really common at all, but, you know, where a sprinkler system has failed uh, to operate or, or failed to operate in the correct manner, then these are some of the reasons why that may be. Um, again, these were in no particular order, uh, but I would say that system turned off in error is going to be at the top uh, of, of the list, really, top of the pile in terms of reasons why a sprinkler system may have failed. So obviously a sprinkler system has uh, various um, isolation valves. Um, it may just have the one. Uh, it may have uh, lots of different ones. Um, it depends primarily on whether it's a property protection system or a life safety system. So again, as I've shown you in, in diagrams in, in the past, life safety systems are zoned, and therefore there's more isolation valves. There's probably only a two between any sprinkler head and the, um, the, uh, uh, the water supply, uh, the, the kind of start to the end, there's probably only two uh, isolation valves. Um, yeah, we, we should avoid um, putting a, a more isolation valves in. Basically, the more isolation valves we've got, the more chance you have of something going wrong. Um, just a, a quick reminder, it'd be great if people could uh, mute their microphones uh, and cameras just while I'm, I'm talking. If you've got questions, um, then do put them in the, in the chat um, and the comments sort of section, and I can have a look at those uh, and get back to you. Um, so, yeah, system turned off in error. So, basically, where that isolation valve is closed, um, you've lost your sprinkler protection, either in the, the, the whole of the system or in the zone, depending on which isolation valve uh, is closed. Oh, if I can figure out who it is that's got their mic on. Hold on. There we go. Hopefully that's solved, solved that one. Um, yeah, system turned off in error. So, um, so that might be that uh, someone's closed a valve for maintenance purposes and then forgot about it. Um, in some situations, it might be the tenant. So the tenant, you know, has kind of discovered the valve, turned it off, um, you know, for, for whatever reason, um, and then of course you've lost sprinkler protection. Um, it might be that uh, there's been a fire, and again, it, it's been turned off, and then it's been left off. Lots of, of, of reasons, um, some malicious, some just uh, human error, which mean that that isolation valve is closed um, and then um, say the system obviously isn't going to work um, if the valve is closed. Uh, next one, inadequate water supply. Um, so basically we, we don't have either any water or enough water. Um, so again, that might be that the, the pump um, is, is broken, so we, we can't kind of get that water in. It might be that you're relying on the town main pressure, uh, and the town main pressure isn't sufficient to actually do the job properly. It might be that your water storage tank has got a leak and therefore is empty or, or not full, 
it might be your maybe you've got a reducing capacity tank and your float valves are broken and therefore you're not going to get the sufficient infill loads and loads of, of, of kind of different reasons as to why your water supply may be inadequate um, so that might say mean that you get no water or you don't get enough water to meet the, the kind of duration that's designed for or it might be that you you've got water but it isn't at sufficient pressure for the sprinkler heads to actually do their job um, and so, so I mean all of these points will kind of pick up on um, in more detail in kind of other other areas um, so for example I've got a presentation um, particularly about service and maintenance requirements of sprinkler systems um, and I've got other presentations say, focusing uh, more in depth on water supply. So, so all of these we'll, we'll pick up on it in more detail at another time. Um, I can't actually see that one. What's that called? Um, system frozen in, in the corner there. I mean, my face is covering the, um, the, the one in the corner. Um, yeah, system frozen. So yeah, sprinklers that, that, that are using a wet system are going to have water within the pipes. Um, and yeah, the, the kind of the biggest danger for, for that water in the pipes is going to be um, risk of freezing. Um, so obviously, if you're in a, in a building that's being used every day um, and you know, there's, there's, there's heating on, then it's not going to be um, a problem. But where you've got um, the part of the building exposed to um, the outside, um, then you know, the risk of freezing is, is increased. Um, now, there's obviously things you can do about that. You can you can use trace heating, you can use lagging of, of the pipe, um, and you can have sensors on it, you know, to, to make sure that it's it, it's working. Um, but yeah, again, that that is a risk that either those systems fail, or you weren't expecting uh, the pipe work to freeze, uh, and now it is. I mean, something to kind of, I suppose, to, to bear in mind um, with um, coronavirus and lockdown, etc is that if, if lockdown continues into the winter, and obviously we hope it doesn't, uh, but if it does, then you might have um, buildings such as leisure centres, for example, um, which are shut. Um, so you're kind of expecting them always to be warm enough to not have to, to worry about frost, uh, frost protection of pipe work. But if there's no one there, then you know, they're going to turn the heating off. Um, and they, you, know, you might get um, a chance of pipe work uh, freezing, say, in, in buildings and in places that you weren't expecting. So, um, yeah, that, that's something uh, to kind of bear in mind um, if you're a building owner, if you're uh, a, a service engineer, um, to be kind of looking at, at that kind of situation, so when, when the winter kind of rolls around. Uh, next one, poor maintenance. Um, so that, that might be, um, for example, um, valve seizing, um, I guess, would be a, a good example of that. Um, so the alarm valve, for example, um, which I explained last week, and I'm going to show you again in the next slide, um, is um, yeah, it, is mechanical in operation. It uh, has a, a hinge joint, um, and if the alarm valve isn't kind of exercised, uh, which it should be, it should be being exercised every week. Uh, it should be being serviced and maintained. Um, it's kind of stripping down, cleaning out, replacing the, the rubbers um, around the seals. So if that isn't being done, uh, then you do have a, a chance that when the sprinkler system is called upon, um, that the pressure in the above the alarm valve reduces. The alarm valve kind of wants to open, but it's it's stuck um, in the, the closed position and won't be able to do it. Um, other examples of poor maintenance, um, I guess you know that the pumps would be a, a good one. Um, so again, we want, we want the pumps to, to run when they're called upon. Um, has the, the diesel pump, for example, got, got enough fuel? Uh, that again, all these things should be being checked. Uh, and then it's a case of kind of spotting um, the, the kind of the small issues uh, before they become big issues. So, for example, a, a leak on a pipe. Um, so if, if you start to see you know, a, a pinhole leak developing on, on a pipe, then kind of flagging that up, getting that sorted in the short term, obviously means that the sprinkler system um, may be off for just a, a few hours while that's sorted out. Um, if the leak develops into you know, a, a, a fitting falling off or you know, a major leak, then your sprinkler system is going to be off for a much longer time. And then, of course, there's a risk. Uh, that the fire is, it, you know, there's going to be a fire whilst the sprinkler system is offline. 
Uh, next one, occupancy does not match protection. So yeah, the, the sprinkler system is designed for a specific application um, and a particular hazard category. Um, now, so again, I'll come on to this in, in lots more detail in future presentations. All of this determines the amount of heads that you have, the spacing, the discharge density, um, the, the maybe the, the size of pump, um, whether there's multiple pumps or single pumps, uh, how much water you need. Um, all of this is kind of fed into matching the protection to the occupancy. So, for example, um, if you've got um, you know a, a kind of standard um, office environment, say uh, maybe you've got nice you know, thick walls in between um, each kind of each of the rooms. If you compare that to um, you know a high hazard uh, warehouse with lots of stored goods, flammable stored goods, clearly that there's going to be a different demand placed on that sprinkler system. Um, so where occupancy has changed, um, so maybe you know one business has, has sold up and, and left, another one's come in, um, or maybe uh, it's the the same business but now they are selling different products than they were before and therefore the, the kind of storage that they're using is different, what they're storing is different. The sprinkler system would need to be kind of upgraded or, or you know, adjusted to match the occupancy uh, that is there. And then finally, uh, fire spread from an unsprinklered building or area. So uh, again, as I mentioned before, sprinklers are designed to catch the fire early and you know, dump a load of water on it whilst it's in its early stages. Um, sprinklers are not designed to, to kind of take on uh, a large fire uh, that's already been developed. So if you've got, you know, so the, the whole idea is that you sprinkler protect the whole of your building. Now that may not always be possible and that may not always be desirable. Um, and again, I've got a presentation specifically on um, on that topic of, of uh, which areas you, you should sprinkler protect, which areas you can choose not to, and, and why you know you, you would kind of choose those different things. Um, but yeah, if a fire develops in an unsprinklered area and then spreads into where the sprinklers are, I mean, yes, the sprinklers are going to do their best, they're going to operate and they're, they're going to do a, a decent job, but again, that's not really what they're designed for, and the sprinklers may well be overwhelmed. Similarly, if the fire is, comes from a from a, a building um, that isn't sprinkler protected, obviously you've got a very large fire then that's spreading into uh, the sprinkler building. So again, that would that would signal trouble um, for a sprinkler system, but obviously it would still do its best. So there's a, a few examples there about um, what what could go wrong uh, in a sprinkler system. Um, got a comment there saying no no slides can be seen. Um, I can see them. I can see them on my on my Blue Jeans app and on Facebook. So yeah, if anyone else is, is, tr is struggling with to see the slides, then then, then do let me know. Um, but yeah, it seems everything seems working for me at the moment. Okay, so I'm um, going to go back to this diagram here. No, no slides for me either. Okay, <laughs> I don't know why Steve and Paul, you're struggling with the slides. Uh, David said he can see them. Like I say, that, that it, everything looks fine to me. Um, what I can do is is kind of uh, stop sharing and then start sharing again. Maybe I'll I'll try that. Give it a, a reboot. See that's. Uh, Okay, so yeah, I've got a whole uh, mixture of people, some saying that can and some saying that they can't see them. Okay, yeah, but Paul's saying that that's better, so that's that's good. Um, yeah, again, I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but yeah, I've, I've kind of stopped it and started it again, so hopefully that, that's improved matters. Um, if anyone from Project Fire is listening, maybe they can... Uh, Help to help me to sort it out. Um, okay, so th th this diagram here is, is what I showed you last week, um, and it is yeah, it, it, it's a good kind of starting point really to understand uh, the, the whole cycle of what a sprinkler system is doing, what it's all about really. 
So I've got some, some key um, pictures on the screen here, labelled uh, one, two, six. Um, so one is our, our sprinkler heads, two is a flow switch. Um, so this is a typical life safety sprinkler system. Uh, number three is our isolation valve for the zone. Um, I haven't labelled the um, fire alarm panel, but yeah, you can see that on the screen there. Uh, four is our, um, it's our it, the, the number four is, is called uh, a few different things, um, alarm valve and insulation control valve um, are, are, are two, two examples of, of that device. Uh, then five is our water motor alarm gong and six is our pressure switch. So say if we introduce fire into the building, the heat from the fire rises up to ceiling level. When it gets there, it's going to heat up the, the liquid inside the glass bulb. That liquid expands and that will set off this kind of chain reaction, the plug of the sprinkler head. So the glass bulb breaks, the plug falls away, the water then exits the head and it hits the deflector. And that deflector then generates this spray pattern, um, which gives us um, you know, around about four meters diameter worth of, of protection. Um, we have because water is now exiting that the sprinkler system through the um, through the sprinkler head, that's going to generate a flow of water down this this pipe, and that's going to deflect the paddle, which is part of the the flow switch, and that will be linked to a a fire alarm panel uh, of some description or BMS system, for example, which will flag up that there's an activation in that particular area. Um, as to what happens with that signal is, is an interesting uh, topic, and maybe that's again something that we can talk about in the future. Um, does it does it generate a fire signal? Yes, um, but you say you, you you could do various things with it. Um, you could delay it. You could have cause and effect coming in place. You might want to go and investigate it before you evacuate the whole building. Um, say it depends on the occupancy um, and depends on, on the AHJs, again, the authorities having jurisdiction, the, the kind of stakeholders um, for the, the premises as to kind of what they want to do. Um, and yeah, working with, with fire engineers as well in terms of you know, what is the fire strategy? What do we want to do? Lots of things you can do with the, the signaling from the sprinkler system and obviously the smoke detectors, heat detectors. Um, BMS systems can all kind of feed into uh, very complicated um, cause and effects. Um, also, it could be very, very simple. Uh, it could be the case that as soon as the flow switch goes, you get, um, you know, the fire alarm goes off site wide and everyone evacuates. Easy peasy. Uh, so number three is the uh, isolation valve. And as I say, that will that is normally open and will remain so um, again in life safety. That will be monitored. So you can see I've also got a wire from the um, isolation valve off to a panel um, and that will come up as a fault signal if it's not in the fully open position. Um, this is a wet system. So we, we had pressure in this pipe here. That pressure was pushing down on the alarm valve and the clack inside the alarm valve. As we lose pressure through the sprinkler head, then the, the pressure holding the alarm valve closed is going to be reduced. The alarm valve is going to open. And uh, th this supply line, if you've got pumps and tanks, that will be linked to, uh, the, linked to the pumps. So as this supply line drops in pressure, that will be picked up um, on the initiation board. Again, keep saying it. Future presentations, I've got um, some, some detailed slides about initiation boards and, and kind of how they work. Uh, and how you how you test them. So that initiation board will then call the fire pump to operate, and that will then push more water into the system. Um, the alarm valve is called the alarm valve because it generates an alarm, and the, the reason why it does that is that there's a small um, opening through the side of the alarm valve here, called the annular groove, uh, and that is is concealed when the, the clack is closed. When the clack is lifted, uh, that, that hole is revealed and the water exits through here and it triggers our water motor alarm gong, so our water powered bell and also our pressure switch, which again will be wired to some kind of system uh, to give us an alarm or to yeah, plug into our, our cause and effect uh, system uh, in some way.
Okay, um, so yeah, what makes a sprinkler system? Um, this is kind of a good time to kind of bring this up, really. So we need a suitable water source. Um, so yeah, all sprinkler systems are going to use water. Um, you can have sprinkler systems which use um, other mediums as well as water. So basically, having some kind of additive within the water. So so foam uh, is is a, an obvious example of that. We've got a mixture of water and foam together um, that can take on uh, more specialist risks uh, that you're protecting. But yeah, all sprinkler systems are going to use water um, as their kind of primary means of, of fighting a fire. Um, so yeah, and again, in future presentations, we'll look at dry systems and pre-action systems, uh, deluge systems, etc. Um, all of these are going to use water, um, but some of them are going to kind of hold the water back uh, for a little bit later. We need a piping network to distribute the water. Um, so yeah, the, the, we, again, we've got slides about um, pipe work coming up in future presentations. How do we how do we join it together? How do we bracket it? Um, how do we support it, etc.? Uh, a means of actuation and discharge. Those are the sprinkler heads. Um, so yeah, they are going to be there to, to operate automatically and then to just discharge the water. A means of detection. So that's our generally our flow switches and our pressure switches. A means of raising alarm, so that's where the electrics come in. So as I mentioned last uh, last week, I told you about the, the history of sprinkler systems. So sprinkler systems were invented, you know, but before we had um, certainly before we had reliable um, electrical systems in, in place and, um, and fire alarm panels, etc. So you know they are designed to operate um, free from le electrical supplies. Um, you know, possible exception of uh, the, the fire pumps these days, but you know, they are designed to be mechanical in nature. The means of detection is where the um, electrical side comes in. Although, of course, um, back in the day, you know, that, that's what the water motor alarm gong was for. You know, it's a water-powered bell, so it is giving you that, um, that kind of detection and raising an alarm uh, without electrical supply. Um, but you know, they're a bit, uh, bit old-fashioned uh, now, aren't they? Uh, and then finally, say uh, re means of raising an alarm, so normally dealt with by um, the fire alarm system, and then a means of isolation and resetting the system. Uh, the isolation, say, could be for for maintenance, service and maintenance purposes, um, and it, you know it could be for in the aftermath of a fire uh, to isolate and then reset the system. Um, yeah, and again, that, that that's important. Um, I, I guess uh, particularly where you've had um, a false false alarm, false activation, you know, you want to get that system reset uh, and back in fully working order as soon as possible. Uh, and same after a fire, um, again, as soon as we can, we want to get that system back online. Um, water supply requirements. Uh, in brief, uh, a need to provide sufficient flow, provide sufficient pressure. So those two things are kind of key, pressure and flow. So sprinkler heads have a minimum operating pressure um, for ordinary hazard systems uh, is 0.35 bar. Um, so that's, that's the pressure that they need in order to operate uh, correctly um, and be able to discharge the water. And obviously each sprinkler head needs that minimum operating pressure. Um, th th there is... Um, I mean, if, yeah, I was about to say, is there a maximum pressure? Um, a good question. <laughs> Maybe someone could put that in, in the chat. But I mean, we, we obviously have a general uh, maximum pressure of the sprinkler system at, at 12 bar. Um, would a sprinkler head like 12 bar? Um, I, I think it would. Um, but yeah, we need a minimum pressure and obviously to, to be able to discharge the water uh, c correctly um, as the sprinkler head is designed. How many to flow? So there's an amount of water we want to get out of every single head, out in, in every single room, um, done by meters squared. Again, come on to that later. But yeah, the, the water supply needs to be able to um, provide um, a number of sprinkler heads sufficient flow in order for in, enough water to come out of each of those heads. Uh, then we need to provide sufficient duration. Uh, which I'll come on to later. That is the kind of amount of time that the sprinkler system is designed to, to work for. It's got to be reliable, um, obviously. 
Um, but there's, there's kind of different uh, levels of reliability. Um, I say for life safety, that we want to, to, to boost that reliability by having backup systems, backup supplies, etc. And uh, for certain property protection as well, we'd also want to increase the reliability. Uh, and we've got to comply to regulations. And um, yeah, mostly I'm, I'm talking about RAS regulations there, water authority uh, regulations. Um, obviously, we're using water. Most of the time, we're getting that water from the town main supply, uh, either directly or by filling up uh, water storage tanks. So we need to comply with the regulations in terms of uh, backflow prevention is, is kind of a key one there. So what are our options? Oh, here are some options here. So um, pump, pump and tank system, that's probably a, a phrase that you, you've heard, pumps and tanks. Um, so it might be one pump, might be one tank, might be uh, one tank, two pumps, might be two tanks, two pumps. Um, I don't think it would ever be two tanks, one pump, but yeah, I guess it's possible. Um, so yeah, again, depending on what hazard category you're protecting, um, whether it's uh, property protection or life safety, would all depend as to how many of each you want. Um, but also um, space requirements, electrical um, requirements could all kind of feed into the, the choices uh, that, that, that you make in that, that regard. Uh, a town main system. Um, again, we'll, we'll talk about this in more detail in another presentation. But uh, yeah, town main, we, we can use uh, a direct feed on the town main for our sprinkler systems. But before you all reach for your, 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 kind of your, your comments in the, in the chat, yeah, it, it is becoming more and more um, unlikely that, that you are going to be able to do that um, because of the pressure and the flow that I mentioned earlier. You know, Pressure is, is kind of the, the, the big one often um, because you, you can do a test on the town main and you can say, yeah, well, I need six bar. Um, I've got I've got six bar. So that, that's good, isn't it? But then the water authority kind of drop the, the bomb on you and say that, well, actually, we're only going to guarantee one bar. So that means that although you might have sufficient pressure today, they're not guaranteeing that you've got sufficient pressure tomorrow. And that's obviously a, a big problem. Um, so, yeah, town main can be used where appropriate and where the town main is kind of up to it, um, but say often there are kind of complications down the line. Uh, a boosted town main. Um, so what that kind of means in the British standard is a, um, a, a kind of a directly boosted town main system. So you've got a, um, a pump fitted directly on the town main supply. Um, so that's why I've said there kind of uh, point one not generally permitted. So water authorities don't like uh, that to be to be done. Kind of pulling the water off the, the, the town main um, causes them, them issues. So that's, that's not generally permitted. However, you, you can use a system uh, such as um, Pressure Check, which is the system that, that Project Fire Cell, um, which is a bit like a brake tank, if you like, that the town main is coming into uh, a kind of holding vessel and then being pumped out at a higher pressure. Um, or you could say, if you're residential and domestic, use the boosted cold water riser. So again, you've, you've already got, uh, again, a bit like a, a brake tank, you've got a, a, a water supply, you've got um, um, a, a riser that's under pressure, and then you can take the sprinkler system off from there. Uh, I've got a separate um, presentation uh, in the future to do with residential systems uh, in particular, and we'll look at some other options for um, kind of how you would you would kind of best do water supplies for residential and domestic. Uh, other things are a, a private reservoir, legate, lake or lagoon. So again, all of these um, can be can be done. Uh, conditions apply. Um, filters, for example, um, you know, things to kind of filter out the the, the stones and the mud. Um, the river, sea, canal. Again, conditions apply. Um, you know, we, we don't want dirty water or certainly uh, salt or, or brackish uh, water in our sprinkler system. Um, so we would we would charge it with fresh water um, and then just use the um, the kind of the, the, the dirty water, the sea water, um, and you know when the sprinkler system operates. Uh, and then so all of those are, are possible. All can, all can be done. 
um, air pressure tank and gravity tank. Uh, I've included them because they are in the British standard, uh, but they are not generally used um, a bit. You know, certainly air pressure tanks are just very old fashioned, um, not very reliable. Uh, so I've been told, you know, lots of issues with those. So, yeah, we don't use those anymore. Uh, gravity tanks are fine um, as long as, you know, we've, we've got the space to put it in. We've got the structure. Uh, we've got all this kind of structural loads calculated. Uh, we've got planning permission in place. So, again, it, it's mostly it's more trouble than it's worth. Um, but, yeah, a gravity tank in some ways is better uh, than a pump. Because you know you've, you've got gravity, and gravity is pretty reliable, um, so that's that's gonna, you know less likely to go wrong. Um, okay, uh, moving on. I think uh, time's kind of slipping away from me. I've been rabbiting on too much. Um, so these are taken from section nine of uh, BSEN twelve eight four five. So that's the kind of the main um, standard for sprinklers under industrial and commercial. So they have um, water supplies listed as either single uh, or superior or duplicate. So there's some examples there of a single supply. It's basically one water supply, if you like. Uh, superior supplies have kind of got added uh, reliability. So a good example there would be one tank and two pumps um, would be a superior supply. And then we have duplicate supplies. So you've basically got two completely separate independent water supplies um, say each separate from the other and that would be a duplicate supply so that would be even better so you know single um, is kind of the worst uh, superior in the middle and duplicate at the top but as I say it, it's not a case of um, it, 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 it well I say it's really a case of again matching the water supply to the risk that you're doing and, and kind of what you're you're trying to achieve um, then combined water supplies, so yeah, feeding things like hydrants and hoses off the sprinkler installation. Um, that is generally not done, um, although you know it, it is it can be done. But um, again, you just need to make sure that there's always enough um, supply for both systems at the same time. Um, so yeah, if you if you if you've got hydrants, for example, uh, then you'll be looking for okay, well, how much is the hydrant going to going to pull off? Therefore, I still need this much uh, for the sprinkler system. Um, in the technical bulletin, so TB204, um, it kind of uh, rewrites the uh, the water supplies uh, and lists them as grade one, two, and three. It's not single, superior, and duplicate, but one, two, and three. Um, one is basically a duplicate supply, two is basically a superior supply, and three is basically a single supply. But you can see there are a few exceptions there. So a superior supply will count as grade one as long as it's um, sort of not massive, so you know, limited to 2,000 sprinkler heads. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's kind of the main difference um, between the two. So yeah, you might see on your on your specification um, both kind of terminologies being used: uh, single superior or duplicate or grade one, two, and three. And now you know what they are. Okay, looking at a few diagrams now. So this is a um, a superior supply using a town main. So a town main is generally um, counted as a single supply, uh, but where you've got uh, a feed from from two different directions uh, from the town main, then it would count as superior, on the basis that you've got kind of two two pumping stations, two isolation valves. So if the water supply town main it is shut off um, for maintenance or repairs then it, it, it's probable that you're still going to have um, a water supply from the other side uh, of that connection. So, uh, yeah, that would be a superior supply using the town main. You can see a few other things mentioned there. Um, superior single supply using suction pumps. So here we've got, again, one tank, two pumps. Um, so, again, that, that's called a superior single in the technical bulletins. Uh, I guess it's superior because we've got two pumps and it's single because we've got one tank. I would just call that a superior supply, to be honest. I wouldn't call it a superior single. Uh, and then here we have a superior twin, um, which is a common life safety setup. We've got two half capacity tanks and two pumps where each pump can see 100% of the water, but the water is going to say kind of split into two halves. Uh, this just means that we can we get some maintenance uh, on one of the, the tanks. Um, so if, if one needs, um, if, if then the liner needs replacing, for example, then we've still got half of the water 
available. Uh, and you might say, whoa, you know, only half the water. Um, yeah, it's obviously better than nothing. And it, in the vast majority of cases, it is going to be sufficient. You know, sprinkler systems are, are, are based on, um, you know, safety margin on a safety margin on a safety margin. So I, I showed you the, um, the statistics um, in um, episode one. I showed you the statistics um, where, say, most of the time it is only one sprinkler head that actually operates. Um, in which case, you know, half the capacity is going to be more than enough. Um, so, yeah, I'm not saying that the half, half tank is, is good, um, but say it's certainly better than nothing. Um, and say in most cases, it is going to be sufficient on its own. So that's why it's, it's called a superior twin. OK, so it's not quite a duplicate supply, but it's better than a superior supply, hence why it kind of fits in the middle. Yes. Uh, that's right. Um, got another comment about uh, bypasses around the uh, the alarm valve. Yeah, you're quite right. Actually, number five, it should have um, that kind of bypass line shown on it, shouldn't it? Because if it is a life safety setup, then you would have to have a bypass. Um, yeah, we'll be talking about that um, when I talk about um, sprinkler system maintenance. So we'll be kind of showing uh, the bypass around the the alarm valve. So yeah, that's there so that the alarm valve can be uh, serviced and maintained whilst keeping sprinkler protection. Uh, but yeah, but there should be, uh, quite rightly, should be a, a bypass line around here. Um, not going to talk about this very much uh, at the moment because I'm, I'm conscious that I've kind of already gone over time. This is a typical pump and tank system for residential or domestic application. You can see it's actually very similar to um, industrial and commercial. It's obviously smaller, uh, smaller in sort of physical size and, and power, etc. But the kind of the, the way it works it, it is very similar. But yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that again another week. Uh, duration factors. This again, this is quite simple. Um, we have light hazard, ordinary hazard, and high hazard. I'll give you some examples in a future presentation. So we've got 30 minutes for light hazard. 60 minutes for ordinary hazard, and oh, dearie, dearie, I should say 90 minutes for high hazard. I didn't, uh, too busy with my copy and paste to apologise. So it should be 90 minutes for high hazard. Uh, and then under residential and domestic, uh, we've got category one, two, and three. 10 minutes category one, 30 minutes category two, 30 minutes category three. So that will all obviously feed into primarily the size of any water storage tank. You know, that, that duration is gonna make a massive difference to that. OK, and, and that is it for today. Um, in uh, episode one, I got a lot of uh, comments and questions about wet and dry risers. Um, so I kind of brought that presentation uh, forward. So next week, we're going to talk about wet and dry risers. Um, so like I said, they're not, they're not a sprinkler system. You know, they are totally separate. Um, but you know, they do have a lot of similarities um, in, in terms of what their, what, what their kind of core purpose is and, and uh, you know, the pipes and, and the pumps, etc. So, yeah, we'll be going through that, um, kind of highlighting um, the differences, how they work um, and the requirements, etc. So that's what I'm going to be doing next week. Uh, so, yeah, thanks so much for, for tuning in and, uh, and listening. Um, and, yeah, I hope to see you again next week at 10 o'clock on a Thursday. But uh, yeah, as, as I've done previous weeks, so I will just uh, stick around um, and just have a look and see if there's any questions in the uh, comments on both uh, Blue Jeans and Facebook. Um, so yeah, um, we've got a question here about the, the presentations being uploaded. Um, yeah, presentation one and two are definitely already up um, on the website and on YouTube. So I checked that yesterday. Um, how soon do they go on? Um, I don't know. It, uh, Kind of depends on um, our kind of our marketing team. Um, so yeah, a few days, um, but yeah, sometime in the middle of, of next week, uh, they'll be uh, they'll be up online. How have I got any questions, comments on Facebook? No, it doesn't look like it. Facebook was uh, alive with questions in week one, but uh, not so many anymore. Uh, oh right, um, someone's talking about uh, David's talking about um, a fire in um, a block of flats in London last night. So yeah, I, I must say uh, I haven't actually looked at the news uh, today. Um, yeah, just brought up and uh, 
got my kids sorted with breakfast and uh, sorted them out. So, yeah, I haven't actually looked at the news today. Uh, but, yeah, maybe next week um, we could have a, a quick look at that um, and, and, yeah, see see if there were sprinklers within that building and, and kind of we'll probably have a bit, bit more information by next week uh, in terms of what went on. So, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that to my attention. Okay, well, say so thanks everybody. Uh, I think I'll be uh, I'll be off. So yeah, hope, hope you have a great day, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. Cheers, bye bye.